This is Evan with EB3D Printing. In today's video, I'm going to go over installing Clipper onto the Ender 5 Plus with the SKR Mini E3 V2 board along with the TFT35 V3 display. This is not going to be an all encompassing guide, uh, but I am going to cover most of the installation process. This video will not go over uh, tuning or anything like that, like pressure advance residence compensation. I'm going to try and save those for a separate video to keep this one a little less lengthy than my typical videos. I will, however, try to cover as much as I can in this video, but that's enough for me. Let's get into this installation. So before we dive into installing Clipper onto the Android 5 Plus, there are a few things we're going to need to download in order to complete the process. First up is some sort of web interface to interact with the Raspberry Pi and Clipper. For the sake of ease of use of this video, I'm going to be using Octoprint, uh, mainly because it is one of the more larger, more recognizable web interfaces out there for 3D printing on the Raspberry Pi. While Octoprint is a great web interface, it's not the only option that's available. Two other options that I would like to point out that I won't be covering any further in this video are Fluid and Mainsail. These both perform the same function as Octoprint. But the difference is where Octoprint you have plugins that you can download and install to kind of customize Octoprint to your liking. These have a lot of those plugins built in. Like one example would be customized color themes. Another example would be a bed mesh visualizer. Again, these are great options. If you want to look into them further, I'll provide links to them in the description. But for the sake of this video, I won't be diving into them any further. The next program that we're going to have to download is some sort of SSH terminal to allow you to remotely access the Raspberry Pi in order to perform some of the command line arguments that we need to input for installing Octoprint um, Clipper as well as the display firmware for the TFT35. For this video, I'm going to be using PuTTY. It's a very bare bones, straightforward, easy to use uh, terminal program. Um, I'll provide a link to this in the description. The next program we're going to need to download is some sort of file transfer program. Since I'm on Windows 10, I'm going to be using WinSAP. There are alternatives out there for Linux and Mac OS. One example would be FileZilla. I'll provide a link to both of these in the description. We're going to need a file transfer program of some sort in order to access the files on the Raspberry Pi. The main files that we're going to need to be accessing are the Clipper firmware that gets built during the installation process, as well as installing the configuration file, the printer configuration file, onto the Raspberry Pi that Clipper interacts with in order to get the main settings of the printer. The last thing we're going to need to download is the no touchscreen firmware. Natively, Clipper does not support the Big Tree Text touchscreen modes, but the Big Tree Text TFTs have an ST7920 emulation mode. The ST7920 screens are supported by Clipper. So basically this allows the Clipper to interact with the ST7920 through emulation drivers. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to download the pre-built binary. You can, however, download the whole zip file. This allows for some slight customization of the um, you know, touchscreen firmware, like taking it to full screen mode versus condensed mode, um, and a few other things like changing the, the colors of the screen from like a black background, white text to like yellow text on a black background. Simple stuff like that. But like I said, for the sake of this video, I'm just going to download the pre-built binary. Um, a link to this will also be in the description. Well, one last program that I forgot to mention until I started going through the process myself and realized we need it is some sort of disk imaging program. This allows you to write the Octoprint image to the SD card that you plug into the back of the Raspberry Pi. For this process, I just use the Raspberry Pi imager the good thing about it is it's available for all three major operating systems. So a simple download install which should work on every system. I will provide a link to this in the description. So now that we have everything downloaded and installed, we're ready to start the installation process. 
First up, we're going to need to put the Octoprint image onto the SD card that we're going to use for the Raspberry Pi. In order to do that, we're going to need the Octoprint download as well as the Raspberry Pi imager. So you're going to take your micro SD card that you're going to use for the Octoprint and install it into the computer. It'll pop up. Oh, I got firmware on there. You want to delete everything that's on there because or back it up because it's going to be deleted when we image the SD card anyways. So we'll go over the Raspberry Pi imager. We're going to choose OS. We're going to scroll down here to use custom. We're going to want to select the downloads folder and then select the Octoprint image that we want to put onto the SD card. So click open. Now that we have the image uh, chosen, we're going to choose the SD card. It's the mounted SD card in E and then just hit right. You're going to get this warning that, you know, all existing data will be erased. Like I said, make sure that the data is on there is acceptable to lose or you have it backed up. So you click yes, and then this will take some time. I'm going to cut to the end once we're done. So now that Raspberry Pi Imager is done writing the Octoprint image to the SD card, it does a verifying process. Once this verifying process is complete, there's going to be a couple windows that pop up. This is typical. Um, what's going to happen is the imager is going to eject the SD card. So we're just going to cancel this, close everything out, uh, and hit continue. There's a few things we need to set up before we install it onto the Raspberry Pi. So take your SD card uh, out and then install it back into your computer. That way it pops up. You're going to have two windows pop up. This is like format disk. We're just going to close this one out. And you don't want to format the disk. All right. So the first file we're going to be looking for is this Octopi WPA supplicant. What this does is it allows us, let me draw this over here. This allows us to connect to our Wi-Fi network. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to look for these this these lines right here, the WPA WPA2 secured. We're going to need to remove the pound signs before these lines to uncomment them out. Um, then what you're going to do is you're going to put your SSID name here, example SSID, and then your password for your network. So password example or <laughs> let me spell example you know so you put your ssid name here and then password down here if for whatever reason you have a hidden wi-fi network you're going to need to add an extra line of scan underscore ssid equals one what this does is when the octoprint or raspberry pi boots up it scans for the network of the ssid name and then, you know, installs the pre-shared key. The next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to come down here to country of origin. Whatever country you're in, you'll either need to add the line of country, say like Australia or New Zealand is not on here. You're going to need to copy one of these lines and uh, adjust it to your country. But I'm located in the U.S. here, so I comment out uh, Great Britain and then uncomment U.S and now you will save this file. And we are done with that one. The next file we're going to go to is Octopi. What this file does is it sets up your webcam. We're going to go to this first line here, camera auto. We'll uncomment that. If you're using a USB camera, you can just type in USB here. If you're using the Raspberry camera, you can type in Raspberry. I use the Raspberry camera and I just leave it to auto. This allows me later on through Octolapse to access uh, customizable options for the Raspberry camera. The next up, we're going to do camera USB options. We're going to change this to um, 1296 by 720, I think it is. Your, your camera will be uh, different, but for my uh, Raspberry Pi, I just do a four by three, um, 780, I think it is, 926 by 780 and then just bump the FPS up to five or 15. Uh, the last thing to allow customizable camera options is we're going to scroll down here 
to these web root options, we'll uncomment these two lines and then backspace. So it just looks like this. This allows the, like I said, Octolabs to access a Raspberry Pi camera to allow for customizable camera options. And then we are done with this. So next up, we're just going to eject the SD card and install it into our Raspberry Pi. So now that we are over at the printer, I'm going to take out the Raspberry Pi, slide in the micro SD card with the label facing up, plug in the USB cable, plug in the power cable, and then make sure to power it on. So now that we have the SD card with the Octoprint image installed into the Raspberry Pi, it's now time to set up Octoprint. So you'll want to open up a browser tab here, and there's one and two ways you can go about doing this. First is if you only have one Octopi instance or Raspberry Pi on your network, you can just type in octo, octopi.local, and this will take you to the um, instance of Octoprint. The second is the way that I'm going to go about doing it is typing in the dedicated IP address for the Octoprint instance. Um, since I have more than one Raspberry Pi on my system and more than one Octoprint running, I just type in the dedicated IP. You'll have to find this through your network settings. So after we found it, we will type enter. You'll be displayed with this uh, setup wizard screen. Um, it's basically the introduction. So what we'll do is we'll hit next. You have the choice to restore from backup. So if you already have an Octoprint instance set up and you're setting up a, another one or just reflashing the Octoprint instance, you can restore for backup. Access control, this is where you enter in username and password. And then we will create an account, login successful, next. Anonymous uses tracking, I enable this. That way, you know, it provides them some feedback uh, to help hopefully make Octoprint a little bit better. Um, next is the online connectivity check. This is to check to make sure you're connected to the internet. And if you're not, it prevents you, it prevents, you know, the Raspberry Pi from using resources trying to connect to the internet if you are not connected. So you just test the host port here, we'll test name resolution. You know, both of those are enabled, they work. So I'll enable connectivity check, hit next. Plug in blacklisting, I, I recommend enabling this as well. This prevents you from, you know, potentially installing harmful plugins that are on the Octoprint plugin manager. So we'll hit next default printer profile. This is where you go through and name your uh, printer Ender 5 plus. We'll name it there. It's a generic ret wrap. Um, this is where you set up print volume. Um, since we're on the Ender 5 plus it is 360 by 360 by 400 or 400 500 would be a little uh, excessive uh, axis. The only one I, I recommend changing here is the E. We'll drop that down to 100. Um, next, it's a 0.4 nozzle with one extruder. So we will hit next. That's all these steps. We click finish. So now that we have Octoprint all set up, we're not ready to go yet. We probably will not be able to connect to the printer. There's a few more settings that we have to adjust when we uh, install Clipper, but I would go ahead and um, just install these updates now. So we'll get these updates out of the way. Now that they're installed, it'll the um, uh, Raspberry Pi will automatically reboot. You'll get this server is offline warning that pops up. So once it's uh, back up and running, we just hit reload now. Now that Octoprint is back up, we are actually going to pause our Octoprint configuration for the time being. We will come back to Octoprint after we get Clipper set up and installed onto the printer and then finish configuring the last few steps we need to in order to have Octoprint communicate with Clipper. Before we get into installing Clipper, the first thing we'll want to do is update and upgrade the Raspberry Pi OS. This is fairly simple, pretty straightforward to do. So what we'll need to do is we'll need to have uh, Putty open and I will provide a link to this webpage in the description. So we'll type in the IP address that we uh, accessed the Raspberry Pi from earlier and then click open. Now we'll be pre presented with this um, potentially potential security breach. This is just the SSH certificate um, 
So you want to click yes here. Now we'll bring this window open. Now it'll ask you to log in as if you've never set this up before, the default username is Pi and the default password is Raspberry. So we'll be logged in and now we will have the Octoprint instance up. So what we'll do is we'll highlight this sudo apt update, right click copy. Now to paste in putty, it's as simple as a right click, you right click, hit enter. It'll ask you for the sudo password. Again, this is raspberry. And then it'll go through the update process. Now that that's done, we will do the full upgrade. This one will take a while. So I will uh, cut back once this is done upgrading. Well, before it's done upgrading, it'll prompt you with this. Do you want to continue? Yes or no. Just hit Y and uh, continue. And as I said, it will take a little bit to go through this. So I'll cut back in a little. All right. So now that that is done installing, what we're going to do first before we move on to installing Clipper is we're just going to reboot the system. To do that, we do sudo reboot. Won't be prompted with a remote side unexpectedly closed. That's okay. So now that we've updated the Raspberry Pi and rebooted the system, First, we'll have to log back into the Raspberry Pi before we begin installing Clipper. We will log into the session. We'll be prompted with the screen login. This is Pi and Raspberry again. All right, so now that we're here, I will provide a link to the Clipper Docs um, webpage. We'll click on installing it and we will begin um, installing Clipper. So again, we'll just start here with these first two lines to uh, clone the GitHub. We will copy this, go over here to the putty session and right click. And this is the install script. Um, all you have to do is right click and, or not right click, but just hit enter. It'll ask you for the sudo password. This is raspberry again. Again, as with the upgrade, the clipper install takes a little bit to get done. So I'll cut back when it's finished. Now that clipper is done installing, we'll move on to the next step, which is flashing the microcontroller. So. Now that Clipper's installed and it has restarted, we'll move on to building and flashing the microcontroller. For that, we're going to switch over to this other web page, which is the Voron Design web page. I'll provide a link to this as well. And we will follow the steps for flashing the firmware on the SKR Mini E3 B2.0. Uh, first up, we'll just, we're going to install the make command. After that's installed, we will CD into the Clipper folder. Now that we are in the Clipper folder, we will go ahead and begin to make the config file. We will be uh, sent or transferred over to this screen um, and we'll just pretty much follow the steps uh, going along. We're going to have to enable extra low level configurations. To do this, we press the space bar and use the arrow keys to move up and down here. For the microcontroller uh, architecture, we're going to have to select the ST microelectronics. So that is selected. For the mini E3, we use the STM32F103 that's already selected. Uh, bootloader, we scroll down to 28K uh, bootloader, hit the spacebar. For clock reference, we keep that at 8 megahertz. Communication interface, we keep that as USB. USB IDs, we don't do anything with. Specify custom step pulse duration, we don't do anything with. GPIO pins, this is where we uh, customize the GPIO pin. We type in exclamation point PA14, hit enter. And once we are done setting up the uh, firmware configuration, we hit Q, we'll be prompted with yes. And now we scroll down here to run the make command. Right click, make clean, right click, make. And what this does is once this is completed, we'll actually have our firmware file that we put onto the motherboard, the SKR Mini E3. Now that this is done building the firmware file, you'll see it's uh, located in the out folder and it's labeled clipper.bin. What we're gonna need to do now is we're going to need to open the WinSCP 
full size this. So we're going to log in. Host name is the IP address for the Raspberry Pi. Username is Pi. Password is Raspberry again. And we will log in. It will be prompted with another certificate warning. Uh, just click add. All right. So now that we are logged in, we want to make sure we have our USB drive that we're going to the micro SD card USB drive that we're going to put um, the Clipper uh, firmware file on. So we will go into the Clipper uh, folder, go down to out, and then select this clipper.bin file. We will right click copy, paste that onto the micro SD card, click OK here. Now just slow double click. We'll be able to rename this firmware.bin. All right. So now that we have the firmware file onto the micro SD card, we can eject the SD card and take it over to the printer and put it into the motherboard. All right, now that we're over the printer, we take the micro SD card, make sure the brass contacts are facing up, and then we place the card into the micro SD slot on the side of the printer. After the card is in the slot on the side of the printer, we go ahead and power it on. The screen will pop up, and once the screen pops up, the motherboard will be flashed. After we have the firmware dial installed onto the main board, it's now time to configure Octoprint to use Clipper. So we're going to head back over to our Octoprint instance, and we're going to log in to Octoprint. Hit save. All right. First thing we're going to set up is we're going to set up Octoprint to use Clipper. So we're going to click on this wrench icon. And the first thing is the connection here. Um, what we need to check is we need to check to see if we have this TMT printer, which we do not. So we're going to have to highlight TMT printer, copy that, and paste that over here as additional serial ports. And we're going to save that. Click back on the wrench icon and make sure the TMT port or TMT printer is selected. Uh, we'll also check auto connect a printer on server start and bode rate we can leave auto because it'll just cycle through the bode rate until it gets the one that connects. After we have TMT printer selected as the serial port to connect to, we're going to go over here to the behavior tab and make sure that cancel any ongoing prints but stay connected to the printer is selected. If it was not, the default setting is disconnect from the printer. Just make sure you click on the circle here beside the cancel. And then after that is done, we'll scroll down here to save. Now, one more time, we're going to go back into the wrench icon and go down to plugin manager. And we're going to select get more. What we're going to do is we're going to search for the plugin that allows uh, uh, Octoprint to use Clipper. That is uh, called OctoClipper our octo clip and once uh you don't have to type in the whole thing but once it pops up we'll just click install it'll go through the installation process and once the installation process is complete it'll automatically well not automatically it'll prompt you to restart clipper so we'll restart it and select proceed now this this uh, dialog box will pop up attempting to reconnect once it reconnects we'll be able to hit reload now once it refreshes here, we should be connected to the printer. And that concludes the installation process for Clipper, uh, just getting it onto the main board. The next thing we're going to actually have to go through is setting up and configuring Clipper so it works with the Ender 5 Plus. Now that Octoprint is set up to talk to Clipper, we have to set up Clipper to interact with the printer. Um, I'm going to do this a little bit different than what the steps are located over here on the Clipper webpage. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to have to find out the serial ID for our MCU. So we're going to log into PuTTY here. I'm going to open up a terminal window there. Uh, this is a simple login as before. All right, now we're going to uh, change directory into the Clipper folder. Now that we are in the Clipper folder, we are going to run this serial ID command. So highlight that, copy. Come over here, right click, paste it in. All right, this is our serial ID number. We need this number uh, for later, which we'll actually put in the MCU section of our printer.config uh, folder. So 
So we'll highlight this, which will automatically copy it. And then what we'll do is I've already done this step previously. So, but what you should do is you should save this to a uh, text uh, document. So we'll save this to a text document. This is just a simple notepad text document, but again, save this for later use. After we have that established, what we're gonna do is just close down this session of Putty. We won't need that anymore. And now we will log into the Raspberry Pi through WinSCP. Next, we will go into the config folder. What this folder contains is a whole bunch of config files that are already preset up, which we will just have to copy and paste. Now we'll scroll down here. You'll see that there is already an Ender 5 Plus config folder. This is not the one we are going to be using because this is for the default um, factory um, display and motherboard for the Ender 5 Plus. What we're going to do is we're actually going to copy this SKR Mini E3 up here from Big Tree Tech. So we'll right click that, we will copy that. Now we'll back up through WinSCP to the default Pi folder, and we will paste in the uh, configuration file. Once this is pasted in, we will slow double click, backspace, and change this name to printer.cfg. Now that that is set up, what we're going to do is we're going to double click this to open it. This will allow us to edit the uh, folder, or edit the file, I should say. So now that we have the file open, we'll be able to go through and edit what we need to in order to get this set up and running on the Ender 5 Plus. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to change the MCU to our serial ID that we just found out. So we will take this serial ID, copy it, go back to our printer config, and we will paste this right where it says serial config, and then save it, control S. After we have the serial ID pasted in, and save, we'll scroll back up and start editing our dimensions and steppers. So first up, we'll start with stepper X. This we change, the only thing we change here is the max dimension. Yours may be slightly different, uh, depending on which fan, fan shroud you use and how much clearance you have on either side of your fan shrouds. But for me, I use 360 here for the max position. And then down here for run current, I change this to 0.680, so 0 0.680, and save after that. Now we will go down to stepper Y, again change this to 360, and the run current I bump up to 0 0.80. For stepper Z, there's quite a few things we're going to have to change here, since the Ender 5 Plus doesn't come with the Z end stop, it uses the BL Touch as the end stop. The First thing we're going to have to change here is we're going to have to uh, change the end stop pin to probe colon space Z virtual end stop. Now that we have that changed, we're going to have to change the position end stop to position min. I set this as a negative value, so it allows me to set the Z offset a little bit better because if you, if you have a position min set to 0, 0.0 and you still have a gap between the bed and your nozzle, you won't be able to set the exact probe offset. Uh, the next up, we have position max. I change this to 400. After position max, we scroll down here to the run current and change this again to 0. 0.800. And that is it for the Z stepper and save after that. The next section I'm going to cover is the extruder. Now this section is completely unique to your printer. So you will more than likely not have the same exact settings as I have. I have a Bontech DDX V2 extruder, so it's a three to one gear ratio. Your values will probably be uh, different than mine. Um, the first value I'm going to cover is this rotation difference. You can think of rotation difference as Marlin's E-steps. 
It's essentially the distance the stepper motor has to travel in order to extrude a set amount of filament. I'm going to walk you through how to calculate or transfer over your current E-steps value to Clipper. Um, you've probably heard about the Teaching Tech GitHub page of how to calculate your E-steps and stuff like that. So go through, get your E-steps either from your current setting or calculate those E-steps. And But what you do is you take your current E-steps value, so we'll do 96.88. And you will plug that into this uh, rotation difference formula over here. It's a rotation difference conversion formula. So to give you an example, we will take that 96.88 from the previous E-steps value, and we will plug that into this formula. The first uh, value is full steps per rotation. So if you have a 1.8 degree stepper motor, you have 200 full steps for, uh, per rotation. If you have a 0.9 degree stepper motor, which is not factory, um, you would have to upgrade to this. It's 400 steps per rotation. So sticking with the factory setting, we take 200 steps per rotation, plug that in, and then divide that by the micro steps. The micro steps are controlled by the stepper motor driver, which on the uh, mini E3, they're 2209s, which have 16 micro steps. So we take 200, times 16 and then we divide that by our current e steps value the 96.88 and that gives us our um, rotation difference so we plug in we don't have to like highlight the whole thing but you can go out you know like four or five decimal places so we'll right click copy that and then we'll transfer that over here to um, the rotation difference from our extruder. Now for me, since I'm running a Bontech DDX, I have to include the line um, gear ratio. This is for any extruder that has a gear ratio. The, the Orbiter is a seven to one, the DDX is three to one, the Bontex BMG is three to one. So you put that in and you, uh, basically insert your gear ratio. Next up, nozzle diameter is the same, or as soon as you change your no nozzle diameter, you you have to change that in the printer config file. Um, PID auto tuning, we will cover that later. Um, run current, this again, I would keep 650 for your current setup. My setup is slightly a bit different. And cell chop threshold, um, you actually have to disable this if you want to run pressure vance. Pressure vance does not work well too well with stealth chop threshold enabled. So that's it for the extruder section. Everything else is pretty much the same here. Next up is the heated bed. We will not change anything in this section for right now. We will get to PID tuning a little bit later. So the next up is the heater fan. Don't change that. This is the parts cooling fan. Don't change anything here. MCU, we already went over. Uh, printer, these are the printer limits. Um, these I'll probably cover in a little bit later video once I go over pressure advance and resonance compensation. But for right now, just kind of set them to what your current settings are. So if your max velocity is 100 millimeters per second, drop that to 100 on the max velocity. If your max excel is like 500 millimeters per second, just change that to 500. Um, static digital output, USB, we don't touch this. Board pins, we leave those the same. The next thing we're going to do is I'm going to pull over my config setup here and we're going to cover the BL touch. To prevent this section of the video from dragging on way too much longer, I'm just going to provide the copy of my printer config on GitHub, and you can use this as, as a reference. If there are any sections or um, settings of the BL Touch that you have questions about, I'll provide a link directly to Clipper's configuration page, which goes more in depth about what each setting has. Also, if you have any questions about any of these settings, feel free to ask about them below, and I will try to answer them. 
But for right now, there's only one setting I would like to point out, and that is the Z offset. You could take your current value that you have for Marlin on the Ender 5 Plus and it put that into Clipper. The only difference though is when you put your current Z offset into Clipper, it is a positive value instead of a negative. And now we will move on to installing the display firmware. The last part of this video I'm going to go over is the no touch screen firmware. Again, this page will be linked in the description. First up, what we're going to do is just download the zip, save the file. Once it's downloaded, we're going to open up a folder. Now this is a zip file. This will be need to be extracted. So I'll use seven zip to extract this. Once the file is extracted, we are going to dive into it. We're going to go to binaries. These are pre-compiled binaries that are set up. We want to select the Big Tree Tech TFT 35B3. Go into that. We will select this bin file up here. Right click, copy. We will take this over to our SD card that is in a USB slot. We will paste this binary in. Now before we extract it, well, after we extract this, we will extract this. That way it's out of the system. We are going to update our printer configuration file. So in order to do that, we are going to go back to the web page, the no touch screen web page. We'll click on wiki. We'll go to Clipper display configuration. We will scroll down to the bottom and we will select this uh, configuration right here. Now all we have to do, copy this to clipboard, go back over to the Octoprint instance, open up the uh, Clipper config file. We will go down and basically just replace this section right here. So we will highlight backspace, control V to paste and scroll down to save. Now that's it for setting up the Clipper config. Now we will go over and install the binary file onto the display. So now that we're over at the printer, we take the SD card, put it in the left side of the display and then turn the power on. Once the power is on, the firmware will flash to the display and then after some time, It'll take the Raspberry Pi to recognize the display and then you will see it switch over to the ready screen. And that's it for installing the display firmware. I was going to end the video with the display section, but I figured I want to add this as well. So you, it'll give you an idea of how you can edit and um, set up the printer config file directly through Octoprint. So we'll log into Octoprint here. So. We are connected to the Ender 5 Plus. We'll go over here to the Clipper tab. Over here in the Clipper tab, you will see a whole bunch of options that you can have. Um, you can directly PID auto tune. You can have assisted bed leveling, uh, set your coordinate offset, you know, analyze the Clipper log. You also can set up macros. So you can have a uh, pause print macro, start print macro, um, resume print macro. You can have a whole bunch of macros set up uh, to essentially emulate, emulate commands that are otherwise uh, Marlin functions. So we'll go up here to the open Clipper config. And this is the printer config file we just uh, went over, discussed, and set up. And if you need to make a change for whatever reason, say your e-steps are off, you'll come down here to your extruder you will just simply change your e-steps to whatever the new e-step value is. So 33.5, you will save this and saving will actually automatically restart Clipper. And that is essentially how easy it is to modify and change your firmware. You don't have to go into, uh, open up the uh, configuration.h file scroll through thousands of lines of code, trying to find the setting you want to change, then change it, recompile the firmware and reflash it. You simply just open the Clipper config file, change whatever you need to change and then save it. And once it restarts, the settings go into effect. You don't have to re you don't even have to restart the printer. It just automatically updates the changes to the printer. To demonstrate how easy it is to make changes to the config file, I'm going to demonstrate this by going over and doing a simple home of the print head with our current configuration.
So we send the home command. Clearly it's moving in the wrong direction. So let's just E stop that. Now that it's moving in the wrong direction, we will go over here to Clipper, open the Clipper config. We will go direction pin. We will change this and take out the hyphen. And then we will save that. We will reconnect to the printer. We will restart Marlin firmware. Once it says it's ready, we'll go back over to the control tab, click home, and it is going in the right direction now for X. Let's see if it goes in the right direction for Y. It's not, so hit stop. Go back over to the clipper tab, open clipper config, go down to the Y stepper, take out the exclamation point there, click save. It, it'll restart clipper. We'll reconnect to the printer. And just for safe measure, we're going to restart the firmware. That way it says it's ready disconnected now it's ready and we will home x and y we will see if the printer goes in the right direction the print head is going in the right direction so that right there is an example of how easy it is to set up and change the clipper firmware to modify settings on the printer well i tried to keep this video on the shorter side it just didn't work out that way there was a lot of information to go over and it i dove into it a little bit more than i probably should have but at least we got Clipper onto the Ender 5 Plus with a SKR Mini E3 V2 board and the TFT 35 V3 display. I would like to, in the near future, go over pressure advance, resonance compensation, and the tuning I went through to get my Ender 5 Plus printing really well with Clipper. It just all depends on how well this video does. It seems to me that my Ender 5 Plus videos don't do well on this channel, so I, I just... I don't know what I want to continue to do with the Ender 5 Plus. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. I try to answer any and all questions I can, and your feedback is greatly appreciated as it helps me improve this channel and produce better content for you guys. If you like this content and would like to see more from me, well, you know what to do. If you would like to support this channel and help me grow and so I can produce more better videos, I have links to do so in the description. As always, I would like to thank you all for checking this out, and I'll see you in the next one.